Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to effectively tackle CPA exam simulations. One of the most common concern I hear from students, from CPA candidate is, I failed the CPA exam because of the simulations. I knew the material, but the simulation threw me off. Well, I'm here to tell you that if you know your material and you are familiar with the types of simulation, you should be fine. Today, I will walk you through the four types of CPA simulation you might encounter on the exam day. Understanding these type of simulations is one of the essential tools that you need in your arsenal. Obviously, the other tool is your technical knowledge. Although some simulations don't require any technical accounting tax knowledge. You heard this right. Some simulations only require read and comprehension. And I will show you in the example. I have worked, I have looked at many CPA simulations over the year that they were released by the AI CPA, actual simulation that appeared on the exam. I do work most of them on my website, farhaplectures.com, so you can see them firsthand. In my opinion, simulations are no more than a multiple choice questions framed differently. I can take any simulation, turn it into a multiple choice. I can take a multiple choice questions and turn it into simulation. So in this session, to sum it up, I'm going to show you the two tools that you need to tackle simulations. One is be familiar with the simulation, the type of the simulation, which I will show you in this session. There are four types. Two is your technical knowledge. Yes, most simulation would require technical knowledge. Now, as I said, some may not, but the majority will. And this is what we'll teach you on farhaplectures.com. We dive deep into the topics, so you will be able to answer CPA exam simulation. My job is to increase your confidence level on the exam day, reduce your stress level, especially when it comes to simulation. Let me show you the four type of simulations that you need to be familiar with. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's gonna help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. The four types of simulations are choice list, number entry, journal entries, usually adjusting entries, and document review. For each type of simulation, I'm going to go over the description of it, how to prepare, in my opinion, under which section most likely this, this type of simulation might appear and show you an actual example. Now I'm going to keep repeating and I'm going to tell you this now, keep repeating this again if you want more examples, especially previously released AI CPA simulations. I have those simulation solved in a video format on my website. If you don't know how to find them, let me know. Starting with document review, and this is the type of simulation that I told you anyone can solve and this is the, the type of simulation that students are least familiar with. Why? Because the document review oftentimes don't rely on your accounting knowledge. It relies on your reading comprehension. It relies on your ability to analyze documents under pressure. So usually the answer is there, but you have to know where to look for it. You don't have to perform any computation or anything. It's there. Just you have to know, confirm it or deny it or replace it with the correct answer. So you're going to analyze a statement or a conclusion. Simply put, do you know how to read and determine whether that statement is correct or not? Simply put, you might ask to keep the statement as is or that conclusion, replace it, or that statement is not needed based on the documents given. Sometimes those simulations, they involve a lot of exhibits. Why? Because you're not really performing any computation. You are just shuffling papers. And this is where you have to be 
confident that you can do this read it slowly know where to look for the information you have your view exhibits email telephone conversations memo financial statements purchase or sales invoices and many other documents how to prepare for this there is no easy way to prepare for this you have to have a good reading and comprehension skills you read a statement you would say okay what is the statement coming from and in my opinion is this coming maybe from the financial statements if so is this an income statement item or is this a balance sheet item should I look under the notes of the balance sheet or the income statement so you have to know what is the source of this information so knowing the source would help also some students are naturally more will be more prepared than other what does that mean if you are giving a tax document review well people who are working in tax they will find this easy or if you are giving a financial statement type of review and people are working in preparing financial statements that's what they do they might find those simulations pretty easy but again they can be they are easy but if you work in the real world work with these simula work with these documents you'll find them extremely easy Otherwise, just slow down. They're only asking you to read something and confirm what, whether it's correct or not. How do you know whether it's correct or not? You go to the exhibits, to the documents to confirm this. And usually this, this could be in any sections. Let's take a look to show you an example. For example, this is a simulation about a document review. They're giving you email, minutes of special meetings, competitive trial balance. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes you might have more exhibits. And they're telling you, see each state there's three statements here Edgewater industrial estate lease agreement and they're asking you there's I'm gonna click on this I'm gonna show on the next slide they're asking you whether this underlined statement is correct you should keep it you should choose something else or you should delete it altogether so once you click on this drop down menu these options will come out original tax it means keep it delete it Edgewater Industrial Estate Property Tax Expense Analysis, Edgewater Industrial Estate Purchase Contract, Proof of Edgewater Industrial Estate Property Insurance. So what you need to do is you need to ask yourself, where is this information coming from? This is, this, does this information make sense? Do I need? Is there, is there something to do with Edgewater Industrial Estate Lease Agreement? If we have nothing about a lease agreement with Edgewater Industrial Estate, we would delete this if there is we need that we need that lease agreement they will keep it if we don't have it and we're talking about the estate property tax expense or estate purchase contract or edge proof of edgewater and in industrial estate property insurance then we would select that one how do I know which one would I select maybe there's something in the email from the CFO or maybe minutes of special meetings those are the two here we have a competitive competitive trial balance I will not bother and look at the competitive 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 trial balance because they're not asking me for a specific number I'm looking for a document so if I click this email and I find out there's has nothing to do with the Edgewater industrial lease that's it my answer is here and my answer is here could be nothing is there or the answer is there I do I do need that lease agreement and that's all what I need and I'm done with that so notice your ability to determine whether that statement is correct is dependent upon your knowledge where to confirm this information or say this information it doesn't even make any, any sense we, we need to delete it or we're looking for something else not for this information the second type of simulations are journal entries and uh, I cannot emphasize this enough if you don't know journal entries as a CPA candidate you will not be able to pass and on every exam most likely 99% you're going to see a simulation especially if you're taken far and bar that deals with journal entries what are journal entries journal entries usually specifically to be more specific I put it in caps adjusting entries they're not gonna give you simple journal entries they might give you a depreciation entry they might give you a payroll entry they might give you to adjust revenues or to adjust payroll some sort of an adjusting entry giving a particular scenario now how would you prepare for these type of entries well you should have been prepared through college so exercises from your college textbook will have adjusting entries now if you don't have your books this is why you would have Farhat lectures so Farhat lectures when I teach I teach through adjusting entries because I teach to accounting students and I do have AI CPA simulation that deals with this type of adjusting entries but you need to know your adjusting entries inside out and obviously your CPA review course usually in which section journal entries are covered far bar and audit and that's why I always tell students don't take audit unless you take 
far because an audit you might be asked to prepare adjusting entries and if you don't remember your far if you don't remember your gap you're not going to be able to prepare adjusting entries for audit let me show you a typical example here you have an example and you are asked to prepare a journal entry just basically you click on this and it's going to give you the account that you need a list of all the accounts you'll put the debit and you'll put the credit and you select the debit the account and the the debited account and the credited account that's being debited and credited and by the way I do have this uh, this simulation also work just FYI so these once you click on this you're gonna come up with all these accounts am I debiting accounts payable accumulated depreciation cash whatever I'm doing it's there I don't have they're gonna they're gonna help me out <laughs> so um, so here the equipment was sold for the situation below record the appropriate journal entry that's all what they're asking you they're giving you a scenario and to prepare the journal entry this is basically a financial 101 or an intermediate accounting exercise that's all what's to it it's a journal entries now if you know journal entries well you might see them in the multiple choice or you might see them in a simulation this is a simulation I can take this question and turn it into a multiple choice and give you four options and one of them is the correct answer you would say, oh, well, I know how to do this, but I don't know how to do the journal entries. If you know how to do the MCQ, you can do the journal entries. So the point here is, do you know how to prepare journal entries to deal with selling a piece of equipment? That's all what's to it. Then we have number entry. Well, what's the description for this? Here you might, not you might, you're going to have to perform computation, then enter the amount in the cell. So you have to do some computation. Now be aware in these exercises, sometimes they might tell you if it's an adjustment to reduce an account, make sure it's negative, they tell you this. And sometimes you might have number entries and you might have also a choice list. So you input a number and it'll be a choice list, yes, no, or some other choice list, favorable or unfavorable or something like that. How can you prepare for this? Again, your exercises from your college textbook. This is an exercise. They're, ask, they're, they're asking you to perform computation and give us the final answer. Just like you perform computation for the multiple choice, but the answer is there. You have to select it. Here, you have to select it. And I'm going to show you an example. Farhat lectures will help. I do have AICPA simulation and many other exercises that shows you how to perform number computation and find the final answer in an exercise and obviously your CPA review course. Usually number entry in all section, maybe ISC it's not, the information systems and control, but you will see it in audit, you will see it in RAG, you will see it in BAR, you will see it in FAR. So in the other ones you will see it and obviously in TCP as well. But ISC you may not see a number number entry, so with the, ex the exception of ISC. So here uh, they're asking us to know what's the amount at risk in measuring loss limitation for Berkey and for Link. And you are giving this information. You would read this information. You would look at year, year two activity and you will perform the computation and you click on this number and you input the number 75,000, 3,600, whatever the answer happens to be. Lost can be deducted in year two, $10,000. Okay, so just basically and remember if the response is a zero enter zero so make sure if the response is zero enter zero that's another thing i did not mention make sure you do that this is another this is another example of number entries here you have to compute the adjusted gross income for different scenarios for example scenario c uh, two here you have six thousand of self-employment health insurance nine thousand of self-employment taxes paid four thousand of reimbursed non-business casualty lost incurred in a federally declared disaster area and they're asking you to compute the AGI for this individual. You just input the answer here. Then scenario three is totally independent from scenario one, two, which is great. These, look, you would say this is an exhibit. What's so scary about this exhibit? Nothing, just simply nothing. You are giving the gross income and you are giving additional information adjustments and you have to find adjusted gross income. I can take this, each one of them, and turn it into a multiple choice. A multiple choice or I can take a multiple choice and turn it into a simulation and that's what they did here so don't be intimidated if you know how to compute your adjusted gross income you know how to compute you know how to do this for a multiple choice you know how to do this for a simulations the fourth is a choice list so list of choices not choices from a drop-down menu could be an account type amount yes no or a combination of those you have to identify basically the correct choice usually here you have the drop down list and the choice is there how to prepare also exercises from your college textbook to related to the topic 
simply put do you know how to identify the correct answer also farhat lectures and your cpa review course the reason i keep repeating those is i want you to know this is a combination of things you have to have some knowledge you have to use farhat lectures you have to use your cpa review course you have to have a knowledge about what simulation am i dealing with all those together plus being confident and you will be good that's why I keep reviewing this. And usually this is in all sections. Let me show you an example. Here they're giving you a scenario, purchase to pay model setting. And they're giving you setting one, a module function when setting is off, module function when setting is on. And which setting make sure the internal control is working properly. So this is basically, you click on this and it's going to be either setting number one, setting number two. So you're giving a scenario, which setting goes with that control. So basically, when you click on it, is it setting 2, 7, 8, and 12? Well, actually, they're even making it easier for you. There's more. There's If you scroll down, there's more. But they're, they're not even telling you to look at all of them. Look at some of them. With every choice you can eliminate, you increase your chances of getting the right answer. So if 2 does not apply to number 2, just take it out. If 7 doesn't apply, take it out. You're left with 8, 12, or not addressed. So make sure, don't, don't panic. They're giving you the answer in a sense that just read it carefully and you will be fine. Another example of this uh, choice list is here. You have to put an amount like this is a variance. This is a variance example. I could give you a variance question. You know, this is they're giving you standard versus actual other information. And they're giving you a simulation to answer selling price variance, sales volume variance. I can give you this in a multiple choice or this could be in a simulation and it is in a simulation. So what you have to do, you would click on it and after you input the answer, after you put the number, you will say whether it's favorable or unfavorable in the other section. And if you don't have time, go in there and select favorable or unfavorable randomly, you will get some points. <laughs> so to summarize, what I'm trying to say is this. Um, giving, uh, given what I said here and giving if you go to my website and look at additional AI CPA questions, Again, I'm going to go back to what I said initially. You have two tools, your knowledge and your knowledge of the type of simulation you're going to be facing. Some will be easy. Some will be more challenging, more intimidating. Invest in yourself. Far Hat Lectures is always here to help. I have two years worth of video simulations from 2024, 2023. I'm always going to keep updating my video simulations that are released by the AICPA. Obviously, I cannot post them publicly. You have to go to the website, farhatlectures.com to view them. Invest in yourself. We are always here to help and stay safe.